Hi friends, it's Miracle, and today I'm bringing you a book review of a novel I really liked called Hotel Silence by Udud Aval Uf Stotish. Translated by Brian Fishgibbon. This is a nice surprise for me. I went into the book knowing nothing, and it's a pick for the book club that I'm in. And I ended up loving this book. It's extremely thought provoking, especially considering how short and small this book is. It's just a little bit more than 200 pages. I've always wanted to talk about this book after I read it, and when I share on other social platforms that I have read this book, I was surprised that how many people replied that they have also read and loved this book. So I guess this video will be an invitation to the discussion. If you have read this book, please share your thoughts with me. This book is about a man called Jonas whose life just got shattered. His mother is sleeping into a deep dementia, his wife left him, and his daughter was not who he thought she was. So as he was depressed, he bought a one-way ticket to a war-ravaged country and booked a hotel called the Hotel Silence. He planned to go there and end it up and upon arrival at the Hotel Silence, he met some locals and other people, and he took some unexpected path. So on the surface, this book is very depressing, with a protagonist who's in a very late stage of depression with a suicidal plan. But the depression was handled so well, and the undertone of the story was actually humorous and uplifting. So many heavy topics are handled so tenderly in this book. For example, it discussed a lot about war and people's life under a war zone, and how people from different backgrounds and ages think about life, and how a war impact on people who has a lot of materials in their life or who has nothing in their life. I was impressed by how the author tackled the topic like women's life in war. Early on in this book, when Jonas was choosing his destination, he visualized the physical danger that might happen to people in a war zone, and he commented something like, if you're a woman, you will be raped first. And this little comment just clicked with me so well. I think it's also because I read a book called Our Bodies, Their Battlefield earlier this year. That is a book that made me revisit the fact that so many lives of women are erased in the world during war, in the history, or in modern life. It's also where I learned that when people are calculating the price the cost of wars, women's life, the women who died, the women who were raped are oftentimes not in those calculations. And rape as a crime was not counted as one of the war crimes. It just like counted into one of the general crimes that happened in wartime. I feel like I can talk forever on this topic, so let me just stop here and say that I really, really like the reflections of war that smartly planted in this book, and I really appreciate it. Another example of the reflection of wartime is about the memories of war. When Jonas arrived at Hotel Silence, he found out that the locals don't like to talk about war that much, nor do they talk about the damage that war did to them or they did to others. This is one of the coping mechanisms that the locals use to not trigger any traumatic memories that the war brought them. But another character commented on this and saying that then a generation will grow up without the memory of it, then there will be a danger for a new war. And this is another place I want to stop reading and applaud to the author. And the characters are not dropping those comments out of nowhere. They're all closely related to the things that happened in the novel. And besides the comment like this from different characters, the book also has a lot of quotes from different points and books, and they're presented as little code sections in between of the paragraphs, and they are the readings that the protagonist did before, and they appear when they fit the protagonist's thoughts at the moment. And my favorite quote in this book is from Anne Sexton, it's called, I am a watercolor, I wash off. This is at the beginning of the book when Jonas was thinking about the questions of life and death, and I think this is a brilliant quote on the weight of life. and. It was just so smart because the author, although she didn't write it, but she picked it out from all the other possible quotes in the history of literature, I guess, and just placed it 
in the very right place in this book. I didn't know Anne Sexton before, and this book actually inspired me to take a deeper look into her work and her life. And since then, I bought the complete poetry collection from her. One thing I love the most of this book is that it doesn't say the name of the country that Eunice went to. It's just saying that this country is in war for the longest time and have recently forgotten by the media. I loved this setting because by not naming the country, it can be anywhere in the world where there's a war right now. And by not naming the country, we certainly don't have the idea and the image of how the country look like. And I think I have two reasons why this is a brilliant idea when presenting people's life at war. First of all, there's so many countries and regions are still at war right now or when any readers read this book. So by not naming the war zone, the author painted a picture of all the people's life who is affected by the war. Because no matter which country the war happened, no matter which continent it is, no matter if the war is using advanced technology or dated machinery, war destroys people's life all the same, and it doesn't really matter where it happened. Second of all, by not telling us where is this country and what is this war, we as readers won't develop an emotional tie to the country or the side of the war, either good or bad. Oftentimes, war or conflicts happened because of politics, history, religion, resources, or so on, and they often have at least two sides. And we as readers form an opinion towards the news we heard and according to the things that we know. So if the author pointed out which country this Hotel Silence is located at, we may have the impression of, oh my god, this country suffers too much, or like, oh, this country is actually the aggressive side of the war. So that this book sends us a message that no matter what stand that people's country stands in, normal people's lives are impacted by the war in the same way. People's lives are in danger or destroyed by the war in the same way. Innocent people die and the living ones carry on the weight of living in the same way. It won't differ if we have a different opinion of which region they're from and what side their country is taking. And these reasons are so important and they're also why I encourage you to not guessing which country this war zone is at when you are reading this book. So in this book, we got this contrast between two places and uh, almost two worlds. One is the world that Jonas is from, which is Iceland. It's a very convenient modern country where he suffers the most and wanted to escape by death. And another is the region of Hotel Silence, which is a post-war or still in war region and people are suffer and traumatized and struggle to leave. But can you compare the sufferers and saying that which one is more legit and reasonable? Because one of the members in the book club actually raised this question and they're saying that quote-unquote Jonas has a first world problem, especially compared to the people who live in the war zone in hotel silence. And my answer is simply no. I don't think we can compare sorrows among different people, and we certainly cannot compare different struggles people have based on their background, based on how many materials they have in life or how many fortune. It's just all a very intangible weight that people carry on their either mentally or physically. If you suffer, you suffer. There is not a scale that compares difficulties and there shouldn't be one. Thankfully, I think the author actually handled it perfectly. You can tell that she's caring for each, every one of the characters, no matter of their background and what they are going through. And here I also want to emphasize that depression is a very common but serious thing. By National Institutions of Mental Health, depression can cause severe symptoms that affect how you feel, think, and handle daily activities. Depression can happen anywhere in the world. It is not caused by overthinking or disliking one's life or complaining. It is certainly not a first world problem. And in Jonas's case, he has a suicidal plan. He's in a very later stage of depression and he needed support and help. Besides war and depression, the author also make a 
Effort to describe the human bodies and skins, and also scars, and interestingly, how wounds heal and form new tissues. And I would say that this is the underlying theme of the novel. And actually, the Icelandic title of this book directly translated into scars. So you can tell this is a very important concept of this book. I'd say that this book will be a hit or miss for a lot of people. I liked it a lot. But I also know that the pace of the book is really, really slow. And although the author has a very Nordic minimalist kind of writing style, you can be disturbed by all the quotes from poets and writers that, when they came into the play, sometimes the sudden thoughts of Jonas can occupy the pages, and I imagine it can be frustrating if you don't like the style. One of the members in the book actually said that they feel like the book ends before anything had the chance to happen, and I would argue it's not the case. But I understand if you like a fast-paced, action-packed story, this book is not for you because we do live in Jonas's head for. Quite some time, and you even can find him rambly. But as you can tell, I quite enjoy this book. I liked the examinations of Jonas's thought. I think his thought, along with like some comments from other characters, are very very thought provoking. So if you like any of the elements that I mentioned earlier in this video, or you find yourself wanting to explore some heavy topics. But also with a tone of humor, I would recommend this book. And that's my review for Hotel Silence. So please let me know if you have read this book, what's your thoughts about it? And I'm guessing a lot of people actually have read this book. Or if you haven't read this book, do you want to pick it up and why? And don't forget to say hi in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up if you like it. Happy reading. Stay healthy. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye.